Hi everybody. Um, I am going to teach you how to create this very cool dinosaur marionette today. Um, so my name is Abby. I am a museum assistant. I'm a tour guide and I do a workshop. I lead workshops at the Ballard Institute. So I am here today reporting from my apartment and I'm going to be walking you through creating this really cute string puppet. So I'm going to go over materials first. Uh, let's see, we're going to need something for the head and body. I recommend toilet paper rolls. You could also use a paper towel roll that's been chopped in half. Or on my example, paper cups, styrofoam cups work really well for this. Um, if you use plastic cups, just be aware that you're going to have to poke a little extra hard because it's a little easier to poke holes in the styrofoam and in paper. Um, and with the toilet paper rolls, you can use a hole punch. So know what you're getting into with those. Um, you're also going to need some string. It could be any kind of string you have lying around the house. It could be yarn, could be string, could be, I have embroidery floss that I'm going to use. Some of this cool beading elastic ribbon could be anything you've got. Um, popsicle sticks, straws, pencils, anything that you're going to make with the uh, control rod. So the control rod is what we call this thing that holds together the puppet up. Um, I am going to use straws for mine that I saved. If you have popsicle sticks, use them. If you have sticks from outside, those work great. If you have a pencil or a pen that you're willing to tape together and sacrifice, use it. <laughs> Whatever you've got. Uh, for this workshop, I'm stressing objects that are found in your own home. So all of these things are things that I had already. I couldn't go out and buy anything new, so these are all things that I had or knew to start saving, like toilet paper rolls. Uh, next, you're going to need something for feet. So this is a little open-ended. Um, washers work really well if you have them. Bottle caps. I have two Coke bottle caps, so I thought these would be really cute feet. On my example, I have soda bottle caps. If you don't have those, you can also use cardboard that's cut out. Chopsticks also do work really well for the uh, control rod. You're right, chopsticks would work really well. Um, let's see, we have tape. If you trust yourself with hot glue, you can use hot glue, but I have masking tape right here. Um, let's see, something for poking holes if you're using a cup. A pen works really well for that, but so does if you have a compass, you can actually use the pokey side of the compass and that works as well. Um, we have paper. I have some paper here that I'm going to use for accessories on my dinosaur, such as its tail, but could also work really well if you tape on things like eyes, tongue, spikes. This works really well if you don't like dinosaurs to make a dragon. So making paper wings or spikes could look really exciting. Um, hole punch will save your life. This will help you a lot. Scissors, of course, whoops, and some pipe cleaners that jumped ahead of things. So pipe cleaners are really great for any details that you want to put on here. Um, paper as well. If you have pom-poms, beads, tissue paper, fabric scraps, anything that you want to decorate your puppet with, that's all up to you. And I also want to put this out here now, but I'll remind you at the end of this as well, if you make a puppet with me today or any time in the future, please post it in the comments. I would really like to see it. Um, I kind of, I'm not the first person in the world to make a cup marionette, but this idea came to me suddenly when I was sitting on the couch and I thought, what if a cup had a face like a dinosaur? And I had to come rush in here and make one. And I pitched it and they said I could make it. So here I am with my really cool marionette, which is another name for string puppet. So. If you have googly eyes, if you have anything else, feel free to bring them into this project, but I'm going to start with what I have. We're going to start with a head first. For my example, I used a cup. For this one, I'm going to use a toilet paper roll. If you have a paper towel roll, now it's time to chop in half with scissors, of course. So your first step here is I like to decorate before I assemble, but maybe you like to assemble before you decorate. So I'm going to be decorating mine first, which means mine needs a mouth. A cute way to start with a mouth is to kind of do a zigzag pattern to give it jagged teeth. I'm just using scissors. I'm cutting into it. This works well on cups. Let's see how that looks. And another one. 
So here's what I have so far. Looking pretty ferocious, I know. We're gonna do that, but on the other side so that it has an upper and bottom jaw. See how it works on the cup. We're doing the same thing on both of these. <laughs> there they go. So I, um, if you have a pet at home like I do, this is about the point in the project where she has gotten very curious and she's sitting next to me pawing at the string. So if you have a pet, they might see your materials and start to uh, want to join in. Hope she behaves for all of it though. All right, so we have, this is cut out now. Boom, that looks great. Um, the next step for this in creating a puppet is you want to put holes on it so that we can tie it up onto our control rod later, as well as use the holes to connect it to its other body parts. If you're using a paper towel roll or toilet paper, one hole in the top right here, boom. Well, same hole that you did on the top there, on the bottom. There we go. Boom. So now there's a hole on the top, one on the bottom, as well as we're going to put one on the end of his nose. So I'm going to do that. Done. So now we have one nose, one on the back of the head, and one on the underside of the head. If you're using a cup, take my compass now, the pen works really well for this. If you're using a cup, you're gonna poke one here on the end of the nose. And instead of doing them on the back of the head like this, you can do it on the flat part. However, with this, you're going to need to poke two holes so that you can thread your string in and back out. So if you're doing that, you can poke two holes on top and two holes on the bottom of it. Easy. Similar thing. This is a little bit easier because you can just use a hole punch. But both methods are wonderful and both methods will get you a dinosaur or a dragon. I haven't decided yet if I'm making a dinosaur or a dragon. Maybe it will come to me. Um, a marker. You can draw right on it with a marker. Mine has an eye now. Let's have him looking forward. Looking good. I want to add nostrils. Nostrils, these holes at the tip of his nose so that he can breathe. Maybe give him another eye on the other side. Oh yes, this looks pretty great. If you have googly eyes, this is a great time to use googly eyes. If you don't want to draw directly on here, you can also feel free to use a piece of paper and cut out eyes. Um, Let's think about what else we want to add. I think I am going to make a dragon in this case, but it's the same shape, so not a too misleading title. I am cutting out out of paper right now a tongue, or if it's a dragon, it could be fire. So I've cut out that. I have some colored pencils next to me. I'm going to quickly color in my fire red and orange. Oh, yeah, this looks good. Unfortunately, this is the only activity that will be off the camera is coloring. Here is some scary looking fire. And thank goodness we have some tape. I'm using masking tape, but whatever tape you have will work for you. Tape on the end, get the head. The fire or the tongue can go right in there. It's a nice breathing fire. On my example, he has a forked tongue, like a snake. So, oh yes. Uh, this would be a great time too if you want to add on spikes, horns. This is where you can really personalize your monster. Create whatever you want on here. However, for the lesson's sake, I'm going to move on to the next step. So know that you can continue to decorate, but I'll show you what's coming up next. So next, we're going to start to prep our body. Body, once again, can be a cup or it can be paper towel or toilet paper roll. Once again, I'm gonna use the roll just because I'm here, but I'll show you what to do on the cup as well. So if you're using the cup, get whatever you're gonna to use to poke, and you're gonna poke two holes, one and two, one and two. Super easy. If you are using the roll, our paper towel, let's see. We've got this here, 
and we're just going to poke one up top like this one up top and now we're going to poke leg holes my monster that i made an example only has two legs so if you want to have arms you're gonna have to add them on with paper or anything else that you've got but ours has two legs that will walk so what that means is that we need two holes for legs to go out of so if you're looking at this hole right here on one side on the other side or on the bottom side that was a little confusing we're going to poke one hole and we're going to poke one hole on the other so now we have three holes in this roll if you're using a cup you actually could use a uh hole punch on a cup as well so you can put a hole punch on both either side and then poke two on top easy this is a good time to decorate if you want to the hole the single hole is going to be your neck hole it's going to go on the back of your animal so this is the animal's back this is the animal's belly which means let's draw on the belly boom it's a belly um i think now would be a wonderful time too for me to add wings so I'm going to put two pieces of paper together and I'm going to cut out a wing shape. Let's see. Oh, that looks good. Excellent wings. I think no matter what animal you're making, a tail is always a good idea too. So I'm going to use the same paper. If you have recycled paper, construction paper, whatever you got, use it gonna make sure I cut some scary looking spikes onto the back of my dragon's tail. There's the tail. Um, if you make a tail, know that you actually can take a hole punch and put a hole right through the tip of it and we'll use that when we string it up later. I'm gonna take a piece of tape. I'm gonna take the end that's gonna attach to our body. I'm putting one side like this first. Oops, I put it upside down. There we go. Putting one piece of tape there first, a little flappy. So we're going to take another piece of tape. And we are going to take the other side. There we go. So that tail looks great. And I also think I'm going to use one of my pipe cleaners. If you have pipe cleaners, they can make great arms, wings. I'm going to make spikes out of mine by folding them back and forth like this. Fold up, fold down. And then when I pull it out, boom, spikes. If you have hot glue, use it. Be wary, it is hot. I think tape works just as well, especially with younger children. And the best part about the tape is if you don't like where you put it, you can take it off. It'll come off nice and easy. And that is actually really useful for later when we string it. Sometimes you don't string it right the first time. I'm gonna cut my pipe cleaner so that it's the right size for my monster. And what do we think? It's a dragon. It can look like whatever it wants. I'm not going off of a real dinosaur here, <laughs> but I am having a lot of fun. Um, decorate your paper before you tape it on, which for Speed's sake, I will not be decorating my wings too uh, crazy, but I wish I could. I probably will after this is over. Use that same method to get a wing on there. You could use the same method for arms if you're making a dinosaur. These would be great for T-Rex arms. It's just paper with a piece of tape. Put it on one side, flip it over, tape it on the other. How's everybody doing so far? Nobody's lost yet, right? We're good. All right. Let's think about a feet. So I said before, I have Coke bottle caps that I'd like to use. So I'm going to use those for my feet. If you're using something like beads or washers, something that already has a hole in it, don't have to worry about poking any holes in it. But first you're gonna decide what your legs are gonna be. I have this nice thick ribbon I think I'm going to use. Determine how long you'd like your legs to be. Folding up my body. That seems about an appropriate length, right? So I'm going to cut one of those first. And I'm going to lay it down on top of it and cut the same shape 
or same size, I mean. There we go. I guess they are the same shape. So I'm going to use that ribbon. You can either tape or tie it to the holes that you just created in the body. So let's tie them down to the body first. I think it's easier to tie it to the body and then go from there. If you're worried about having too little material to tie a knot, tie the knot, pull down one side, and I'm pulling it nice and tight. I've got a leg. Let's do that for the other side. It's a little easier to thread these holes than it is to thread the holes on the neck if you're using a cup. So if you're using a cup, you can always use a pen or a pencil or a chopstick, whatever you've got, to push that through the hole that you just poked. But it's not too big of an issue yet on the body. Let's see. So we've tied our knots here. Boom, looking good. I think I'm going to use the same ribbon for my neck. So determine once again how long you want your neck to be. Two people would make this craft a little easier, but I can manage on my own. So I have hope for anybody else who's crafting by themselves today. Determine what you want your length to be. Add a little bit more on if you need to. If you're tying it, if you're just taping it, it's not such a huge deal. All right, so I'm gonna tie a hole to, remember we had our creature with a hole on top, hole on bottom. I'm gonna tie one to that bottom hole first. And this is where that trick will come in handy if you're using a cup, you might have to use a pen to help thread it through the hole. Here we go. Looks great. And let's get his body ready. A little tougher with thicker material like this ribbon, but at the end of the day, it still works. So use whatever you have. No stress here. We have a pretty good looking shape so far. I think that this is pretty recognizable as a dragon or a dinosaur. Let's do our feet next. Once again, if you were using glue or at any point you can use glue for these, but if you're just using tape like I am, I'm gonna put that bottle cap right there and just tape it down. Another bottle cap. I'm gonna take some tape and I'm going to tape it to the bottom of his leg. With the legs, it works a little bit better if they're heavy. So that's why washers work really well. Bottle caps work, they work decently. Um, but at the end of the day, the strings are what's really gonna help it to move. So I think our next step is going to be making that control rod and tying it up and then your puppet will be ready to go. So very excited about that. For our control rod, chopsticks, pencils, sticks, I've got straws. I'm gonna pop open these straws. I have two. So I think traditionally when you think of a control rod, you think of oops, the one in the middle being a little bit longer than the one on the side. And that might be true with this one. Really, the reality is, is that it depends on the puppet. It depends on where the puppet is laid out. This works out really well because my straw was the same length as where I want my nose to tail to go. And the popsicle stick was how far apart the feet are gonna go. So if you're really putting a lot of thought into this, think about how long your creature is from toe to nose. And a straw is about appropriate for that. So I think one straw is good for that. And if you really wanted to put some thought into it, you could say the same thing. Hmm, my feet are about this far apart. So I'm going to cut it here or just tape it there. You could do two that are the same shape, same size, and just tape it further in. I'm going to cut it for simplicity's sake. I'm thinking, this is making me think of a kite, but I know that that's not what I'm making today. 
I'm holding them together and I'm using tape to first, oops, it's a little tough on your own, but all of us solo crafters are hanging in there today. I'm gonna put some tape around like this and it's not too sturdy yet. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Grab myself a piece of tape and I'm going to tape it on the other side like this. Looking good. So this is what we've got. Now, this is where we're going to bring your puppet to life. This is a scary part, but I promise it's not going to be that scary. I promise we can do this. Okay, I'm eating, I'm eating a paper towel. Or a, it's getting all mixed up here. So your first step in this, let's string the head. Let's string the head so that it stays up. I think that that would be the easiest. So you're holding it here. Determine how tall you want that to be. If it's really tall, you could stand up and have it walk on the floor with you. If it's a little bit shorter, like the one I made, you can sit down and have it walk on a table with you. So I'm going to opt for shorter, but longer might be better for you. Let's see, you can use any string you want. You can use the same string that you used before, but I'm going to use different string just to keep it different. I have some embroidery floss that I think would be good. So I am holding up where I'm deciding how long I kind of want it to be. That seems appropriate, I think. Think about where you're going to be performing it. If you want to put that much thought into it, think about where you're performing it. Think about if you're going to be standing and it's on the floor. Think about if you're sitting and it's on the table. If you're a taller person, maybe you have a really tall marionette. Who knows? But I'm making one for a table, so I'm going to make it shorter. I've cut some string. You can cut a second piece of string that's the same size if you'd like for the nose because the nose and the back of the head are getting strung differently. There's a hole here, there's a hole here. So we're gonna have two strings that go up. Um, when you string it, you have a little bit of control over the character. If you string and both strings are the same size, the head will look straight on like this. Maybe the nose is a little bit lower. Maybe you give a little bit more string. Maybe you take it away. Maybe the nose is up. That's a question for you about what kind of character you're making. And it also can happen when you're taping it up and looking at the movement. With tape, you can decide afterwards that you don't like the height of it and you can always take away or add a little bit more. So here I am tying my string to one side of my head. Maybe you can already visualize a marionette at this point. We're so close to the end. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Obviously, this is a really, really simple marionette. If you absolutely fell in love with this craft and wanted to take it to the next level, you could add, I'm not going to do this today, but if you wanted to, you could add another piece of straw or stick here and you could put arms on it that you strung the same way as the feet except that the holes would be a little bit higher up in the body if you wanted to complicate things but i think if this is your first marionette if this is your first string puppet that you're making it's okay to start simple it's okay to start with what you've got plus you could always add arms on later if it was really if it was really bothering you so i've got my piece of tape that i already ripped I like masking tape, you can just rip it and go. The back of the head here is going to be right sort of in the middle where that junction is. So I'm going to start there. I'm now going to use the string to go. I kind of like the nose tilting up a bit. I think it's cute. So I'm going to hold that up, use a piece of tape, and tape it. He's looking up at the world or at the clouds. So if you added a tail on like I did, this is another great 
opportunity. You can cut a piece of string. If you're not sure how long you want it to be, you can tie one side of it first. Tie the other side here. Just double knotting it for fun. And you can put the tail up top. That means that you'll get a little bit more control over wagging it. So now that I see what height I want it at, I can cut that with scissors. And I can grab a piece of tape. I hope that everybody's having good luck with theirs so far. I'm very curious to see those who are making them with me. I'm very curious to see what your dragons will look like. And then I can look at it and I can go, oh, I don't like the way the nose looks, actually. So let's take that tape off. And let's try again. All right, I'm going to cut that tape. There we go. That's the best part about these puppets. If you don't like the way that something looks, you have the power to fix it. So I'm going to grab some more tape. I'm going to take that nose up again. I think I didn't give it enough string. I think I'm going to cut it in another piece of string. No problem. No problems here. If you're not sure, you can always cut a piece that's much longer than what you know you'll need, and you can always trim it afterwards. Or if you're using tape, you can just tape it up. I'm going to tie that in. I hope that everybody who's chosen to do cups is having as good luck as I am with the toilet paper roll. And here we go. Oh, that's so much better. I love it. Great. So now I'm going to tape it up. And I have a little bit of extra string, but that's okay. Come Moves a little bit like a bird. And now it's time to get strings on those feet and we'll be good to go. I'm going to take two pretty long pieces of string here. Let's see. Fold a big piece in half. I can cut it right there. Lovely. So I'm going to start with taping it on to the foot with one on one foot over here. Tape down the ribbon a little bit more too because it was coming off. So now I have one piece over here. I'm taping it to one foot. And I've just taped it on the top of the foot here. And I have my other piece. And I'm going to tape it to my other foot. There we go. I'm going to hold this up now. It's a little bit tough when I'm my table is down here off screen. But you can sort of figure out what height you'd like it to be at. I like to string mine up so that the ribbon has a little bit of a bend, kind of like its knee, I guess it's ankle in this case, but it's up to you if you want them to be completely taut or if you want to give it a little bit of room. There's one side and I've taped it up to the end of my straw up here. And I can kind of make the other side match a little bit. figure out what I have to do. Do, do. Oh yeah, I think that's looking a little bit even. There we go. Perfect. All right. With that, unless there's any more decorating you want to do, I think our marionette might be done. A little bit of control tips for you. They rest really nicely on your hand moving it back to forth they kind of get a nice sway you can kind of get a little bit of momentum going and he dances quite well 
Um, this part of the control rod is going to control where the head is looking. So I think I didn't add enough. I think I need to make this a little bit tighter. Yes, like that. If you're pulling and moving and you notice that parts aren't moving the way you want them to, it might just be that the string needs to be a little bit tighter or a little bit looser. So I just discovered that. So I made mine a little bit tighter and perfect. He looks exactly the way I want him to. And he's pretty cute. Um, with these puppets, they're simple enough that just rocking this bar back and forth, back and forth, makes him walk. So he kind of has a nice step. Maybe he does the same foot over and over, like he's tapping his foot to the beat. Oh, my puppets seem to dance. Oops. Rocking it back and forth really quickly and he runs. So use those tools to create your own marionette. Um, a request on a different video, and I will go over this briefly, if you want to store this marionette and you don't just want to throw it on a table or something, you want to store it in a way that will keep it from getting tangled in the future. This is a little trick that we use. Um, typically you want a sturdier piece of cardboard, but I don't have that in my apartment. So I will use just a piece of paper. I'm cutting just a rectangle. I'm cutting a slit. A slit, a slit, a slit. That's four slits in the piece of paper. I'm going to outline them in a Sharpie so that you can see where I've cut them since it's not completely clear. I've cut them here. So if you had a sturdier material like cardboard, um, when you think about a string puppet, a string puppet will always get tangled. There is no way that this will not get tangled. So what you want to do is tangle it in a way that you know how to detangle it. So a way that we use is you twist, you twist its body all around like this. And you could use this to wrap the string around. I've made mine a little short. This works a lot better with a marionette that has very long strings. And then you would wrap it around, kind of push the strings in those slits. And this is not going anywhere. This looks like a mess though. However, it's a mess that I know how to detangle. So if I take this off, my puppet will unwind itself and now he's good to go. Well then, I hope that you made a marionette alongside with me. Marionette is just a fancy way to say string puppet, which is exactly what this is. It's a puppet that's being held by string. Um, if you've made one or if you're going to make one in the future, please post it in the comments. I would love to see how it turned out. I would love to see it. Puppets work really well in motion, I think. So a small video or a boomerang photo that goes back and forth is usually pretty cute. So I'd love to see <clears throat> any puppet that you create. But for now, I think I'm going to have to head out. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope that you had just as much fun as I did. I hope that you brought your own materials and creativity to the table. I hope that everything is going well in your own household. And I hope that you're very excited for the Shadow Puppet Workshop that will be on Friday here on the same page, same Facebook Live. We will have a Shadow Puppetry Workshop that is being led by Tracy, who is another Yukon Puppet Arts student. If I didn't say that before, I'm a Yukon Puppet Arts student. Um, I'm a third year graduate. Um, but Tracy Becker will be leading the next workshop this Friday at 2 p.m. I hope you'll join in and check out some Shadow Puppets. And I hope that if you made a dragon or dinosaur, you'll post it in the comments so that I can see it. Hang in there. Happy Wednesday. And thanks for joining me. I hope you have an excellent rest of your day.